Welcome back, Little Nuggets. This is week four, so let's get your seven roots. Don't forget, we're in unit two. Your first root is barrow, bar, or berry. Let's look at some words and see if you can figure out what this means. First of all, barology is the study of gravity. And a barologist is someone who studies gravity. So you see we have the picture of good old Isaac Newton getting hit on the head with an apple and coming up with a theory of gravity and inertia. Another word that uses this root is barometer. This is a word that you've probably heard on the evening news or the weather forecast. And when the barometer drops, that's when we start to get bad weather. It becomes overcast and rain and storms start to move in. So the lower the barometer goes, the worse the weather becomes. And you can see that reflected on the barometer. You see the little uh, icons or picture graphs here that show you what the weather will be like depending on where the pressure is at. So what does barrow, bar, or berry mean? Ta-da! It means weight. So usually you, you'll see this word associated with words that deal with either gravity or some type of pressure. The next root is belly, not belly laugh. First, we have rebellion and rebellious. So rebellion is the noun form and rebellious is the adjective form. Um, this picture is actually from the Nat Turner Rebellion, which happened here in Virginia. It's one of the most famous uh, slave uprisings um, ever. Um, and it really did a lot to push the abolition movement forward. Down here, this guy, many people would say that his look is a bit rebellious because it goes against or fights against what's normal to wear or normal to do with your hair in society. This character over here on the other side, they named her Bellatrix, but Bellatrix is also a word um, that means female warrior. So what do you think belly means? Belly means war. And so usually you'll see it in words that have to do with fighting against or being against something. So for example, Bellatrix is obviously fighting war with tricks. She's a female warrior. Biblio. This one should be easy, particularly if you speak Espanol, biblioteca, you know what this means. So let's look at some examples. A bibliophile, you could describe me, Miss D, as being a bibliophile because I love books. On the right side of your page is something that you're going to learn how to do this year if you haven't already in eighth grade. And that is how to make a bibliography or a work cited. This is a list of books and resources that you used in the course of your research. And this goes at the end of your paper. So if you haven't figured it out yet, Biblio is book. Anything relating to books. Your next route is bio. So in ninth grade, the science that you take is biology, which is, of course, the study of life in all its many forms. Everything from cells to dragonflies to gorillas to people. Um, it even includes things like plants, ecology, etc. And if you're really into science, these are some of the different branches of biology that you might be interested in. Another word that uses this root is biopsy. Um, you usually hear this in context uh, with cancer. So for example, somebody goes into the doctor's office, they find a lump or they have a strange mole, and the doctor has to do a biopsy where they pull out a piece of living tissue. And this down here is actually a picture of a cancerous cell. So what does bio mean? Of course, it means life. Your next root is brev, brevi, or brie. So our first word that uses root is a bridge. Uh, if you look at these two versions of Les Miserables, Les Miserables, the original version, is very, very long. And most people don't read the whole version. They choose the abridged version, which is shorter, considerably shorter, than the original. And the little cartoon over here illustrates the same concept. 
Which would you rather read, an entire book or two words? The second word that uses the root is the word abbreviate. Uh, these are two common abbreviations that you see in writing, and they come from Latin um, or Greek words. Um, and IE is an abbreviation for in other words, and EG is an abbreviation for example. So what does brev mean based on abridge and abbreviate? It means short. So usually you'll see this root used in words where they're talking about shortening something or something that is very short. Cam, only two left. Uh, first word is campus. So some of you may have got to visit uh, some college campuses. Uh, maybe you've been on Nova's campus just to the north of the school. These are all pictures from Slippery Rock University, the campus where Ms. D graduated from for um, my undergraduate program. Um, so it's a great school. It's especially well known for excellence in education and physical therapy or its science programs. Another word that uses this root is campaign. Um, campaign when we're talking about campaigning, it could mean a lot of different things. To campaign is to fight or to run for something or towards something. So Julius Caesar, who you will learn about this year when you study the Romans, was a famous military commander who led his armies on campaigns. We're usually more familiar with the political aspect of this word. So up here you see uh, sample bumper sticker stickers from political campaigns from 2008. You can also campaign for a cause, um, such as the Relay for Life campaigning for funds for curing cancer. Um, this is an ad for the ICNA national campaign against hunger, so people don't go hungry. So what would you guess CAM means based on campus and campaign? CAM means field. Now, be careful. This is not a synonym for agri. Remember, agri is a field, but it's a field that's used for farming. CAM is a field that is associated with a military use, so like the military field of action. It has to do more with the space, not, um, it has nothing to do with farming. So you're talking more about the field of action. And your last one for this week, CAP. Now you may be a Caps fan because they play for the Washington Capitals, but do you really know what those words mean? And let's see if you can figure out what the root means. Capitol, spelled with an O-L, do you recognize these buildings? This of course is the Capitol building in Washington DC. It is the Capitol building for the entire nation. And the picture below it, this is the Capitol building of Virginia, which is located in Richmond. Capitol with an OL refers to the buildings. Capital with an AL is a word that's used many different ways, but is frequently confused with capital with an OL uh, when you're referring to, for example, the capitals of states or the capitals of countries. So this picture, you can see both the national capital with an A, Washington, D.C., and our state capital, Richmond. So buildings, cities. Capital is also used to refer um, to other things as well. For example, in architecture, the capital is the part of a column that holds the roof or the beam above it up. So these are three examples of different capitals. You'll probably learn about these and go over them when you study more about the ancient Greeks. In the bottom right, you may be wondering about this picture, which is a wee bit symbolic. As you can see, there's a plant growing out of a pile of money. Now, that can't happen in real life. It's definitely a symbol. So why is it a symbol? It's a symbol because we use the phrase capital to refer to the amount of money needed to start up or head up a new company or a new firm. So when you hear people talking about capital investments, they're not talking about investing in a state capital building usually, or even a capital city. They're talking about capital as in startup money. 
So what does cap mean? It means head or top. It comes from the Latin caput, which was the word for head. And those are all your roots. Before you stop this video, though, I want to remind you of something very important. For your vocabulary portfolio, your word trees for week four, the requirement has changed. Instead of writing a sentence that defines the word, in a paraphrase, you must, you must use the word in a sentence. It should be an original sentence. Don't copy and paste one off the internet. You will earn a zero for plagiarizing. When you write your sentences, obviously you want to make sure that they're complete, that they're capitalized, that they're punctuated, that they're expressing a complete thought. But you also want to make sure that you use context clues. That way I can see that you really do understand what the word means. Finally, and this is very important, be sure that you spell the word correctly and that you use the correct form of the word. What do I mean by that? Different words have different parts of speech. So when you look up your word, if the page that you're on does not give you the part of speech, I would go to dictionary.com or merriamwebster.com and look up and make sure you know what the part of speech of that word is. The part of speech is important because it tells you how you can use the word in a sentence. It'll tell you whether it's a noun. So nouns are usually subjects, right? It'll tell you whether it's a verb. Okay, so just be very careful that you're using the correct part of speech of the word when you write your sentence. We'll do a mini lesson on this next week, but I'm giving you the heads up now. As always, when you're studying, don't forget that Quizlet is a really fantastic tool that you can use. You can sign up for a free account at www.quizlet.com, or you can just access the flashcards for week four. Um, by clicking the link on the website or by typing in this link right here, http colon backslash backslash quizlet.com backslash w or underscore w r l u l. And again, this link is on my page. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I mention Quizlet, here's a refresher. If you're done, you can stop the video and move on with your life. Get started studying or get started on those word trees. See you in class, McNuggets.